Business is complex, not complicated. Business is complex, not complicated. Complicated means difficult to understand. Complex means many connecting parts. We're going to speak about culture, connection, communication. And ultimately, what I'm going to do is tell a number of stories. I'm an Irish man. That's a necessity as an Irish man to tell stories. I'm going to tell a number of stories to make the complex clear. Now, how excited are we? Before you go into a deeper state of learning, I want to tell you a little bit about what I'm going to do. As Tom has already highlighted, I'm going to draw live as I speak, along 10 meters of paper. The reason I'm drawing is it increases comprehension and it's an engaging experience. And as you will see, that mixed with stories, we're going to make the complex clear. To begin with, coming from an island, I need to tell you about islands, and particularly one island community in the South Pacific. Oh, yes, sir. Let's uh, connect to the image. As an island community, there's always something that I find interesting about a mentality, right? A mentality that I find is different than those of us who live on the mainland. Now, let me see. There we go. The island community mentality, I believe, can be summarized in this following story. Are we ready? <laughs> Every community is formed by a culture. Every community is formed by a culture. And there are different aspects that bind that culture. One of them is the way that we connect, and another one for sure is the quality of our communication. But this particular island community I want to talk about. In the South Pacific, once every 10 years, this community comes together. And they have a special task to build a boat. Everybody in the community comes together. The men have a task, the women have a task, the children have a task. Everybody in the community is involved. And the oldest person in the community has a special task. Whether it's a man or a woman, the oldest person in the village have a special task. They need to sit in the center of the village and they need to build a fire. And they need to keep the fire burning for the whole length of the project, two, three weeks. And they have to sit by the fire and remember why they're building the boat. If there is a dispute during the day, they come back, they sit by the fire and remember why they're building the boat. If people are tired because they sent so many emails, they come back, they sit by the fire and remember why they're building the boat. At the heart of every great organization, project, or initiative is a fire that burns brightly. Now, how excited are we? What is your fire? One of the things that I have the honor of doing is traveling the world and speaking to many different organizations. But one of the great things is that it's not just about speaking to, it's more about listening to. And what happens is that I gain many insights into one of the things that I find most important. 
mindsets or a mentality. What is the mindset of great organizations? That fascinates me, the mindset. What is the mentality? Well, one of the things for sure is that mindsets that are reactive are not the way to go. So what is the way to go? Well, one of the things that for sure comes out of the patterns that I see in so many organizations is a mindset about growth. The growth mindset, how do we grow? How do we develop? And the best organizations I have seen, the best organizations I work with are the organizations that have a mindset of growth. Now, the challenge with this is that we may speak about growth, but we don't necessarily understand growth. And I want to give you two insights into really the dynamics of growth. One insight is that growth means to expand. Now, that's quite obvious. We often think about expansion. However, the second quality of growth is not expansion, but consolidation, to consolidate. So that we expand and at the same time we consolidate. And often when I speak with organizations about growth, they only talk about expansion. However, we need solid roots to be able to grow. Now, this dynamic of growth reflects two of the greatest challenges that organizations face. Recruitment, retention. How do we recruit, expand, how do we recruit, and how do we retain the talent that we have? Now, this is something that many, many organizations face. The growth mindset means that they need to expand by recruiting new people and they need to consolidate by, by keeping the great talent that they have. How do they do that? That's what I want to explore in this presentation. Now, in order to do that, I need to tell you a few more stories. This particular story is quite fun. Now, imagine you are in a room. Now, this is the room, right? And in that room is a, this, as you can clearly see, is a cougar. It's a very vicious animal, right? And next to the cougar is a cobra. Now, as you can see, this is a cobra, right? And next to the cobra is a client, right? Cougar, cobra. Client, very vicious. You've got a gun with two bullets. Who do you shoot? The client twice. <laughs> now, there has been a mentality in the past where we may have treated clients less severely, but we may have treated clients as a secondary dynamic in our business. We may have dealt with what we're going to discover are transactions. Whereas the future is to place the client at the center of all of our activities. Organizations that have a growth mindset place the client center. On one hand, it's very obvious. On the other hand, let's talk about how come we're not doing it more. Second story, second story is, there is a forest. Now this is a forest, as you can clearly see. And walking through that forest is a Irish man and his Dutch friend. Now, I don't know why you're laughing. Right? 
I live in Amsterdam. I've got many Dutch friends. They're great. Now, we have, so the Irishman, the Dutchman, walking through the forest, very relaxed, talking away. And then suddenly, from behind a tree, out comes a bear. Now, this is a, this is a bear, right? Bear. Now, the bear starts running towards them. The Irishman's freaking out. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? The Dutchman's very relaxed. The Dutchman takes off his backpack. He puts on a pair of running shoes. And the Irish guy says, what are you doing? What are you doing? We can't outrun a bear. And the Dutchman says, I know. I just need to outrun you. <laughs> now, I've got many Dutch friends I can make fun of the Dutch. They're great people. One of the things that we face again and again that is our greatest challenge in business is the concept of one thing against another, and that's the concept of competition. How do we break free from the limits of competition? It requires us to step out into collaboration. Now, I had the opportunity to speak to a few people just before we began today, and one of the things that clearly came from this was the opportunities that you guys have to talk to each other. Sharing ideas, sharing insights. We need more opportunities like this in our professional scenarios. Share ideas, bond, connect. Competition needs to become collaboration. The organizations that have a growth mindset collaborate. In fact, if you want to say it in another way, collaboration is the new competition, if that makes sense. So, what that leaves us with then is a sense of possibilities. Yet, we still face challenges. I was living in Ireland, and we were living on a particular street where I had a dog. This is my three, four-legged dog. And we were living on a particular street in Ireland. And what was interesting was that our dog had a very bad habit of chasing cars on that street. Now, this is what all cars looked like in Ireland. Uh, they certainly didn't in the 1980s. Now, what happened was that our dog had the bad habit of chasing cars. Not good. So what happened one day was that he was actually hit by a car. And that was okay. We took him to the vet. The vet put one of these things around his head. His bark got louder. Right? And very quickly, he learned never to chase cars again on that street. Instead, he chased them on this street. <laughs> we can make fun of the dog. We can make fun when we step back. The reality is, ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the challenges we face on a day-to-day -day basis. When we learn, on what level are we learning? Are we learning to do the same mistake differently? Or are we going to do things very differently? So, the challenge of competition, the challenge of putting people center, I want to offer you a key insight. We are talking about communication. This is one of the key insights I want to offer you for communication. It is not about what it is. It is about what it does. It is not what it is. It is about what it does. Are you an accountant, what it is, or are you offering peace of mind? Are you a lawyer, 
Or are you somebody that offers new perspectives? It is not what it is, it is what it does. So, if I ask, what do you do? It's easy for you to say that I'm a lawyer, in professional services, I'm an accountant. But very quickly, I want to hear what it is that you're doing. Does that make sense? So you transfer from what it is to what you do. You bring peace of mind, you bring security, you bring new insights, you bring opportunities. How you do that is through law, through the legal network, through accountancy, etc. It is not what it is, it is what it does. Does it make sense? If I'm meeting any of you after this, conversa- after this speech, I'm going to ask you, so what is it that you do? So, one of the challenges is the fact that I feel that we have the world kind of mixed up. This is where we are now. Now, this is the past, and this here is the future. It is possible to analyze the past. Is it possible to analyze the future? Nope. We can predict into the future, we could create scenarios, we could envision, but ultimately, ladies and gentlemen, we need to design the future. Designing the future means we need a different mentality. We're talking about a growth mindset. A growth mindset is a mindset that is future orientated. Now, there were some lovely concepts that I've, I've, I spoke to a few, a few of you beforehand, and somebody said the idea of forward thinking is what you were talking about, which is lovely, right? So forward thinking in your industry. What is the forward thinking in your industry? This, for me, is about future oriented thinking. We are very good at analysis. We need more skill in design. So let's explore. One of the things that I find often happens in business is clients ask me, well, what do we do when we don't know what's going to happen? In other words, how do we plan for a future that is uncertain? And I want to offer you one strategic insight into this. This comes from a gentleman that was called Tom Peters. Who here has heard of Tom Peters, the management guru from America? Well done, gentlemen. Well done, and ladies. Well done. So, Mr. Tom Peters wrote way back at the early 80s a book that was called In Search of Excellence. Who here read this book? Excellent. For the rest of you, don't read it. Because I'm going to summarize it in this piece of paper right now. One of the lovely things in this book was he analyzed companies that were not excellent, and he analyzed companies that were excellent. And he said, don't do that, do that. Brilliant consultancy. One particular story is the following. He says that companies that were not successful did this. Companies that were not successful did that. Ready, aim, fire. Companies that were successful did this. Fire, ready, aim. Not successful, they had a lot of meetings. They did a research group, and then finally they launched. Companies that were successful, they took action fast and reflected upon it. There's an example. There was a cola company you may have heard of. And in the 1980s, they decided that it would be a fantastic idea to change the flavor of their cola. 
the management team said, yes, brilliant. They did some research groups, some focus groups, and they said, yes, great. And then they launched it for millions, and it was nearly the death of the company. Compare that to a Japanese company. Anybody here from Japan? Anybody? Yes, sir? A Japanese soft drinks company launches 30 flavors of cola into the Tokyo market for three months. Product X, Y, and Z is successful. They then relaunch them and refine. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want one strategy to deal with, it is the strategy of act, reflect, consult. Act, reflect, consult. Act and reflect. That means you take an action, you reflect on it quickly. Take an action, reflect on it quickly. The consult bit means that you just simply need to talk to other people about it. You need to speak to people in your team, in your organization. You need to speak to your clients. You need to speak even to your competitors. Therefore, if there is one strategy I want to offer, it is the strategy where you make an arc. You act, you reflect, you consult. This is the key strategy that organizations with a growth mindset uses. They act, they reflect, they consult. They act, they reflect, they consult. So, let's look at something else. What is your F1 question? Who here follows Formula One? Right. Have, have you guys ever been at that track and felt, the, felt it in your bones, the noise? Well, Formula One, for those of you who don't know, is it's basically cars going around in a circle, right? On a more detailed level, however, it's all about strategy. And there was one particular manager of a Formula One team that was quite famous. And he was famous because he had one question. When the team came to him and said, can we do such and such with the car? He would say, does it make the car go faster? If it was a yes, then they could do it. If it was a no, then no, they couldn't do it. Somebody else would come, can we do such and such? Does it make the car go faster? Yes, then yes, you can do it. A Formula One question for me is something that cuts to the point. What is your Formula One question? What is the one question that keeps you focused on where you're going? What is the one question that guides you in all of your decision making? Organizations that have a growth mindset have a focused mindset. So, now, there was an Irish guy and he went into a bar in Dublin. You know this is going to be a good story, right? So the Irish guy goes into the bar in Dublin and he goes up to the barman and he says, how's it going? And the, bar, the barman says, grand. And then the Irish guy looks behind the bar and he sees that there are three of these things sitting behind the bar. Now, if you've never seen an Irish parrot before, this is what they look like. So there were three Irish parrots sitting behind the bar. And the guy says to the barman, what's with the parrots? And the barman says, well, they're for sale. Really? He says, yeah. And he says, well, how much is the first parrot? And he says, well, that's 1,000 euros. 1,000 euros. What does he do? He says, well, he talks. 
Now, sure enough, he talks with a slight Irish accent, but he talks, right? And he says, well, what about the second parrot? And he says, well, the second parrot is 2,000 euros. 2,000 euros, what does he do? He says, well, he talks and he dances. This is the universal symbol of dance. If you've ever seen the river dance, you've seen the river dance, I can do it from the waist up. <laughs> so, 2,000 euros. He says, well, what about the third parrot? And he says, well, the third parrot is 5,000 euros. 5,000 euros. What does he do? And the barman says, actually, I don't know, but the other two call him boss. It was good. There's a gentleman at the front laughing. Good. Good. Power has shifted. Power has shifted in the world. Power has shifted from hierarchy towards individuals. There's a friend of mine who, um, he's a great, uh, he's, a, he's an amateur photographer, let's say, a professional amateur photographer. He bought a camera, and two days after the guarantee, it broke. He brought it back to the shop. The shop said, hey man, is that a guarantee? I can't do anything. So he was quite annoyed with this, so he sent a tweet. The company that made that camera shortly after contacted him. Excuse me, sir, what seems to be the problem, etc. He explained they replaced the camera. An individual brought a global organization to its knees. Power has shifted. And with the shift of power, we need new models and new mentalities to communicate. One of the challenges we face in organizations is that we have a senior level of experience and we've got young talent. And there's a growing gap. Because what language we might use for a senior level of management and experience might be different than what the younger generation needs. And we need to bridge that gap by speaking a different language. One of the things that might help is from science. So, this is a very large cell, like we would have in our body, cell, right? Now, science used to say that the most intelligent part of the cell was the nucleus. And then we were corrected because science actually said, well, no, the most intelligent part of the cell is the skin because it is the skin that decides what should go in, what should stay out, and what comes out again. It is the skin that is alive to the environment. Now what happens is, if something goes in, it is digested by the nucleus before it goes back out again towards the skin. If the skin is the most intelligent part. How have we structured our organizations? Have we structured our organizations to empower the skin? Who is the skin? What I love about this story, of course, is the idea that those people who are connecting with clients on a daily basis have their finger on the pulse of what's happening. And we need to embrace them and bring them back in so that we in top management can give advice. What's great about this story also is that there is a need for hierarchy. There is a need for hierarchy. There is hierarchy in nature. The difference is what the nucleus does, perhaps we need to redefine what we're doing on our management team, what we're doing on our board, perhaps we need to find a way of embracing the edges. So, 
there is a, uh, there's a, I, I give many workshops within organizations where we go through this material and we apply it to the organization and their challenges. And one of the tasks that I give is the following. Imagine that you are at point A and over here is point B. Now, at point A, you have a collection of bricks. Bricks. And you need to get those bricks to point B, but you can't leave point A. What do you do? How do you get the bricks from point A to point B? Suggestions? <laughs> Ask somebody from point B, I like that. One of the ideas is, of course, you throw them, right? Now, same scenario. What we have is we have point A and we have point B. This time, however, instead of bricks, you have a collection of these. Now, these, as you can clearly see, are birds, right? So, you've got a collection of birds at point A. You need to get them to point B. What do you do? Teach them to fly. Teach them to fly. Nice. What else? Put a, put a worm at, at point B. That's beautiful. That's a worm. Look at that. In other words, one thing we could do is we could throw food to point B. Make sense? One of these, ladies and gentlemen, is called management. And one of these is called leadership. The future is about leadership, ladies and gentlemen. Um, French-speaking people in the audience, where does the word manage come from? What is the name of the place that you train horses? The word manage comes from the French word to train horses. I believe, ladies and gentlemen, there are only two things we should manage in the world. Horses and objects. Everything else we need to lead. And leading means we need new levels of communication. For sure. By the way, this is, this is a lovely task to do with your colleagues. Um, I've done this with a group of engineers, and it was brilliant. They told me the angle of efficiency. And then when I asked them the second question about the birds, without blinking, they said, kill the birds, throw them. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful what kind of levels of influence we give engineers, right? But it, it was fantastic. Use the brick, kill it, throw it, tie it to the brick, throw it. So, yes, 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 yes. Now, so there's something here that I want to offer in relation to a model of communication. It's very simple. Communication, I believe, can be broken down into something like this. This is who you are as an organization. So your organization is going to interact with clients. Now, usually there's different types of clients and usually we've got different types of interactions. However, what happens is the first thing that you do and the first thing that your client experiences is your action. The second thing that happens is as soon as your client has experienced your actions, they form a belief. And what happens after that is you then communicate to reinforce what you've just done. This is a model that I want to highlight has been very important to get right. Your action needs to be parallel to your communication. If your action is not parallel to your communication, you will create a negative belief in the mind of the customer. 
if you don't do what you say and say what you do, you'll create a negative belief in the mind of the customer. If, however, you do what you say and you say what you do, you will create a positive belief in the mind of the customer. This is the purpose of communication. That there, that's what you want. Um, who here has had the pleasure of flying Ryanair? <laughs> There's some pain on the faces, I can see that. Ryanair is interesting because I believe Ryanair communicates with more integrity than, shall I say, some local airlines. If I am flying Ryanair, Ryanair says, we are a budget airline. And what is the experience that I get? Budget airline. I can like it, I can not like it, but fairness, what they're doing and what they're saying is in parallel. Does it make sense? Now, let's imagine instead I'm flying with a royal airline. It says it's a royal airline, and I leave from Schiphol on a royal airline. What are my expectations? What is my experience? I believe Ryanair is communicating with more integrity than some airlines. Does that make sense? We've got to say and do in parallel. And um, this model, by the way, is what I call the ABC of relations. The A is where you start. It's deliberately actions first. Um, I want to give you, uh, for you advanced listeners, you know who you are. For you advanced listeners, there is a subtlety. Your actions need to be just actions. Just means they need to be fair. You know, let's imagine that this is the Ryanair experience. It's a budget airline. If Ryanair deteriorates into this type of experience, that's unjust. If, however, it's just the actions, and if I communicate with tr truth, what will happen is you will create here trust. That is the goal of every organization. If we are talking about creating a culture, if we're talking about connections, and if we're talking about the essence of communication, it's to create trust in the mind of your clients. If you want to keep your clients, because we're talking about retention, retention is not just inside your organization. Retention is how do you keep your clients and how do you build a relationship with them. We need to create trust. A final note, ladies and gentlemen, that's one-way communication. As soon as you have trust, what happens is you invite them into a dialogue. That's the D. I can talk a lot more about that after, perhaps. So, what we have here is a turning point. Because let's imagine we have communication and actions that are building trust. One of the things that I want to take a moment to talk about is a vision. Organizations that have a growth mindset, and the ones that I believe communicate the best, are the ones that have a great vision. And we use the word vision quite easily. And I want to take a moment just to unpack the word vision. A vision is a place, not a point. A vision is a place that we move into. It is not a specific point to reach. 
An example. Anybody here from the UAE? Anybody does work in the UAE? Yes? Then you might be familiar with His Royal Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, who is the Crown Prince of Dubai, and a fantastic individual when it comes to vision. One of the dynamics that he's done is created what I believe is a vision that is a place. The story goes, he was interviewed by a journalist 10 years ago. And the journalist asked him, Sheikh Mohammed, you have achieved great things for this country. Now, this was 10 years ago. You've achieved great things for this country. How much of your vision have you succeeded with? And he said, 10%. Wow. He clearly had work to do. 10 years later, the same journalist asks him the same question. Sheikh Mohammed, how much of your vision have you now succeeded with? He's built the tallest tower in the world. He's developed all of downtown Dubai. He has put Dubai on the global map, international trade. How much of your vision have you now succeeded with? And he says, 7%. She says, I don't understand. You 10%, 10, you've achieved so much more. And you now say seven. And he says, yes. The greater our achievements, the broader our horizon. Wow. Wow. A vision needs to be big enough for who you are going to be. Not who you are, but who you're going to be. Organizations that have a growth mindset communicate visions that are big enough for who they're going to be. So, I, um, I hear in many of my conversations with organizations uh, repetitive language. Um, have you heard of uh, language bingo? Where you're sitting in a meeting and you write down a list of words with your colleagues. There's another name for this, by the way. Language bingo. And you write down a list of words and as soon as the person giving the presentation says that word, you take it off. Right? One of the key words is collaboration. We use the word collaboration repeatedly. And I want to offer you an insight into why we need to collaborate. This is the story. If anybody ever asks you why you need to collaborate, tell them this story. What we have is a story from science. And the story goes that if you have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And if you create the right environment for them, then something unique emerges. What do you think emerges from carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen? What? What, sir? Diamond. Diamond. Not quite. Somebody said alcohol. Now, if, if we're in Ireland and anybody asks you a question, that's generally the answer, <laughs> right? And it's almost true in this scenario, almost true. What is created from carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen is sugar, which then through certain processes could become alcohol. Sugar is created. Is there sugar in carbon? Nope. Is there sugar in hydrogen? Nope. Is there sugar in oxygen? Nope. Where does the sugar come from? Magic. Some people call it science. Magic. Sugar 
is the emergent quality that comes when you have the right culture. We're talking about culture. We're talking about connection. We're talking about communication. The result of the right culture, the right connections, the right communication is a sweet spot. Now, no matter how sweet you are, you are not the sugar. You are the oxygen. Or you are the individual that is putting together the environment where sugar emerges. So, if anybody ever asks you, why do you need to collaborate? Just say, sugar, and walk away. This is reaching the end of our 10 meters of paper. Uh, this is a roll of wallpaper. For those of you who are familiar with wallpaper, every roll is 10 meters long. Hence, I call it 10 meters of thinking. So, this is the end of the roll. And just before we re-roll and recap, we have a final point I want to make. The final point that I want to make is something we're going to discuss in our table setting after this. And it's to do with this subtlety. We are moving from a transaction into relationships. Too much of the traditional business world has been about transaction. You sell something, you're on to the next sale. The future of your firm, of your organization, the dynamic that the best organizations I've ever worked with is mindsets that think about relationships. How does this successful project, your client is happy, you have delivered well, how does this successful delivery build a longer term relationship? This is where it begins, not ends. As soon as you've finished your assignment, that's when it begins. How can you introduce new members of your firm towards that client? How can you build new business opportunities through that client? What can you do to serve that client? How can you over deliver? What can you give them that they're not yet expecting? How do you build? relationships. We're going to discuss this in the table breakout just after this presentation. So let us now re-roll and recap. We're talking about communication, connections and culture and the key thing why we're doing that is to create sweet spots. This is the culture that we want in your organization. One of the ways that we keep that type of culture alive is to make sure that our vision is big enough to move us to where we are going to be. What's going to happen in the UAE in the next 10 years? He'll come back and say, I've only done 3%. <laughs> so a vision is big enough for who we're going to become. A vision is big enough for the place we're going to move into. The simplest model out of all of my experience in dealing with communication is our actions need to reflect our communication. When they do, we create a positive belief. If the actions are just actions, if they're fair, if there's a quality, if there's a value to them, and if we communicate truth, you will create trust. That is the goal of all of your communication to create trust. That's how you build a relationship, right? We're moving from transactions into relationships. The question is, how do you build trust? New forms of leading, new forms of, not management, but leading. 
requires us to speak differently and it, it requires us to engage those people who are on the edges of the conversation, on the edges of our organization. The younger talent are longing to be involved in a more elevated conversation. The younger talent have power that they're, they're desiring to put in place. You can help them by guiding them with a key question. What is your Formula One question? F1, that could be focus question if you want. You don't want to talk about cars. The concept is the question that refines what you do. What is your key question? If you're going to act, make sure you reflect quickly. And then you talk to other people. You act, you reflect, you consult. Act, reflect, consult. Act, reflect, consult. This is the key strategy. Every organization that I work with is working with one variation of that or another. They call it an adaptive strategy. They call it an agile strategy. They call it many different things. That helps us to design the future. And if there is one take home, and I'm going to talk to a few of you after this, and I'm going to come up to you and I'm going to say, hello, what do you do? It is not about what it is, legal advice, accountancy, professional service. It is about what it does. Peace of mind. Helping organizations grow. How? Through this. It's not what it is, it's what it does. Making sure that we learn at the right level, making sure that we collaborate. Why do we need to collaborate? Create sweet spots. Put our client center and make sure that we're focusing on a growth mindset. When we focus on the growth mindset, something magical happens. If you take the C, oh, that's a beep. Ooh, it's a beep. It's a beep. I think that's my time up, sir. If we take the C, and move it to the front, it becomes creative. We make a reactive mindset into a creative mindset. Now, this is a word play. What I want to emphasize with this is that's how fast mindsets can change. Mindsets that are growth mindsets are creative. So, to summarize, there are three things that I want to offer you. What I want to offer you is the fact that our actions is where we need to focus. First thing we start with. Our actions then will create a belief in the mind of our client, which we then reinforce through our communication. The way that we do that is, first of all, by reflecting on the fact that it is not about what it is, it is about what it does. Communicate what it does, and that will lead you into how you communicate. Then what you do is you ask yourself, what is your Formula One question? Your Formula One question communicates towards your actions. It makes sure your actions are on track. And then your actions need to be geared, need to be tailored, need to be directed towards relations. When you direct your, your actions towards relations, you create a positive belief. From that positive belief, you then say what it does in your communication. Your communication then focuses your actions on relationships that create a positive belief, etc. Practical actions creating a positive belief that you then practically communicate. I believe, ladies and gentlemen, when you follow this simple three-step model, what will emerge at the heart of your organization is a fire that will burn brightly. 
Thank you very much.